This is the Wi-Fi Satellite, a project I started nearly one and a half years ago but never made a video about. It's a setup of 14 ESP32 development boards to monitor the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi spectrum. Because the boards are arranged similar to solar panels of a satellite, we gave it their name. <laughs> So, oh, we can you can the change the channel. It's pretty much done. Yeah, we used exactly 14 boards, so we have each board monitor a specific channel. Of course, you could do channel hopping with just one module, but you could miss some packets. With 14 modules, though, you can monitor all channels at the same time. I built this setup with the help of the Antonios. I wrote the software, and he designed and printed the parts to put it together. I want to let the internet know that Dean breaks all my boards. No, I only break the the, the, the broken board. It's you already break the broken boards. <laughs> yeah, you broke the button off oh, and the resistor. Okay, no. We just broke them more than I'm Yeah. Fair enough. I don't know why I cannot get it out. Yeah. We wanted to pull off a cool project for the 34C3, the 34th Chaos Communication Congress in Leipzig, Germany. That year on DEF CON, the Wi-Fi Cactus made quite an appearance. I thought we could do something similar, but DIY ended cheap. So this is how the idea started. Of course, our setup can't really compare to the Wi-Fi Cactus. The Cactus is made out of 25 Wi-Fi pineapples, each one a little Linux computer with two Wi-Fi interfaces for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. The Cactus also works on a battery, and we also thought of that, but I'm not a big fan of 14 LiPo batteries because I bought these 18650 USB power bank thingies and they were supposed to have protection built in and they looked pretty good and they were cheap. But after charging and discharging a couple of batteries with them, uh, one or two emitted magic smoke and I decided that they are unsafe and we rather just skip the whole idea and stay with the USB connections. So our setup is stationary and couldn't be carried around the whole conference. Because of our success that year, we rebuilt the setup with new modules, new software and new design 3D printed parts for the 35C3. So wait, Steph, can you please explain the importance of this? What is this thing? I mean, we had something similar looking last year, but I've... But rumor has it, it's changed somewhat and there have been some updates. <laughs> You see which channel's going on, how many packets it got so far, like the whole runtime. Uh, Wait, has this been on, on overnight? No, no, I just like okay. in, like 10 minutes ago or whatever. How many bytes it recorded so far, which is the uh, the RSSI, the signal strength. strength. Yep. Yeah. And they are all connected via USB hubs. Right down there into this. Wow, this is actually really nice. Yeah, way better case yeah. than last year. <laughs> into that hub there. And then and that the goes, <laughs> oh, no, sorry, the <laughs> other hub. Two both hubs. ups. Both oh hubs. yeah, no, of course, because that's what And yeah. both of these go to this thing into this your laptop right here. Yeah. And wow, this is ancient. Yes. Yes. That's the good thing. What you're seeing in this video is mostly that second revision of the Wi-Fi satellite. The first version had boards with white PCBs and now Travis Lynn updated the boards again uh, and gave them blue PCBs and fixed some minor problems. So it might be a bit confusing but I will link the current revision of the boards in the video description and even though they have a different color they are to 99% the same thing there hasn't really been much change. Now, our main purpose with this project was to show the traffic on each channel at the same time. So each module has a little OLED display that could draw a little graph of how many packets per second were being monitored. And you could then directly have a look at all the channels at the same time and see which one is the most busiest. Now, at this point, you might think if you're already monitoring everything, why not save the traffic? So we did that. But we had some complications. For example, the little onboard antennas of these ESP32 modules don't provide a very good performance. And the ESP32 is a very powerful microcontroller, but it just can't handle the amount of traffic of a hacker conference and write that onto an SD card fast enough while displaying and calculating all the other stuff at the same time. So if you wanted to retrieve that, you'd have to get all the porting micro SDs. Yes. <laughs> No, this is the are. this is the board that we're using. 14 of these. So they have a LiPo connector on the back side. We have the slide switch to go through the menu. SD card reader so we can save the whole traffic on a micro SD cards as well. 
the LoLED and the ESP32 Rover module, which has extended RAM, mm. which is pretty useful. There's also a version with an uh, IPX antenna connector, so you can connect bigger antennas. Okay. And a little RGB LED that we haven't... Could you just solder able. on your own antenna connector there? Or? Yeah, you can. But there's also, like, you can buy a version on the shop. Um, that comes with you an can antenna. Choose. Yeah, you can choose if you want to have the version with the antenna connector or the one without. Awesome. So the standard... To repurpose some of the old boards from the first satellite, I made a Wi-Fi satellite mini. Another friend of mine, Glowl, helped me with the 3D design. This smaller setup has a tiny USB hub built into its case and only using two of the packet monitor boards. Of course this could not monitor all 14 channels at the same time, but it was a nice side project to test the new software I was developing and it didn't need an external USB hub or power supply like its big brother. I wanted to control each board easily without needing to access the buttons. Because of the case, the three-way slide switch to scroll and navigate through the menu was not easily accessible, so I added serial commands to the software. By the way, I just released a library to simplify that process if you want to add serial commands to your Arduino project as well. Uh, check out my last video about the simple CLI library. One question that's come up is that all of these are recording uh, packets from different channels. How do you synchronize them into one file? Um, well, the idea was the idea was that we send um, packets out from another device with the timestamp uh, on each channel. So later when we merge it, we can search for these specific packets. And then we know at this point where the packet was received, there was that exact timestamp. Okay. So we can we can synchronize, but we would it's a bit complicated. Yeah. We need to write the software first to send out these packets. Uh, and we need to write a software to merge and uh, fix the timestamps afterwards. Because Same each way. one has a different wrong timestamp. A different wrong timestamp. Yeah. Now I just needed a little software on the computer to control all boards at the same time, or at least sync their timestamps. I'm not that experienced with Python or Go or anything similar to that, so I just decided to write a few short bash scripts. And that was a big mistake in retrospective. We can control uh, all the modules at the same time now. At least that's the plan. However, there are some difficulties with the whole USB hub thing. We should we should be able to like switch the menu now all at the same time. Okay. If I if I press this button, so let's pray to the to the gods of USB hubs. Pray to the. <gasps> Nothing is happening. Oh no! Okay. Oh, I mean, live demos. Oh crap! The LEDs. Dean, we need more LEDs. Hey, nice. I guess the cheap seven-port USB hubs could be one reason. But I think it would also work much better if I just invested more time to write better scripts. But now you can, because I released all of the source code on GitHub. As I mentioned, Travis Lynn made the boards and I wanted to make a new improved Packet Monitor 32 software out of it. I overcomplicated things that I shouldn't have and now I'm here with this big chunk of code that takes forever to compile and some of the features I really wanted to put in there, which make the, the whole thing so complicated, won't even work. So I removed the part that saves the traffic onto the SD card and made it way more stable by that. But I did add the SD card updater I mentioned in the last video about the DStack boards I made. So I compiled two bin files for you, so you don't have to go through the hassle of getting this code to compile yourself. One is for the DStack Diduino32 final and one is for the ESP32 watch development kit. I will link both products in the video description. If you have more questions about the hardware and these development boards, check out the videos I made about the DStack boards. The Diduino board is the one that we used in this satellite setup. With the updater implemented in the code, now you can just put an SD card in there, put bin files on the SD card, and on startup you can click and select which bin file to flash and that way you can update your development board without needing to install a flasher program or Arduino. The development boards also come pre-flashed already so it really saves you all the hassle of installing the software. Maybe you've noticed that I showed some video footage of the congress and this is because of Satonic 
who was part of our group both times, and he made vlogs about the whole event. If you'd like to know more about our Congress experience, David and I are making a podcast called Insecure Space, and the very first episode is about the 34C3, where we built our first Wi-Fi satellite. It's a very long episode, but it's worth it, I promise. You can listen to it on iTunes, Spotify, and insecurespace.com. I believe it's also on my YouTube channel somewhere. Check out the video description for links. Also check out my Patreon page, I wouldn't be able to pull things off like this without our community. So a special thanks to those that decide it's worth spending a few bucks a month on. I hope you like this video, let me know what you think of this project and if we should upgrade the Wi-Fi satellite for a first time. RGB. 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 RGB on me. RGB on the space sun.